get to this then. So AI, uh, Asif, I'll, I'll, I'll call him Asif because he's, he's, in, he's in the chat and that's his name. Um, but yeah, he's just said this is no power. So he sent two consoles in. Uh, this is the first of two that I'm going to be looking at for him tonight. So he said it's completely and utterly dead. And dead as a dodo. Well, I've got a fish from the power supply. That don't really mean anything, but... Yep, completely and utterly dead. Okay, so this is completely no power. Let's get it apart and see what's going on. I'm willing to bet it's a bad power supply. Hopefully not, that would make a boring video. <coughs> I got the sneezes. Right, anyway, I'm going to drop my temperature down to 169 degrees Celsius at 50% airflow. And I've got a really tickly nose. So I'm going to sneeze again in a minute. You what? Keep the heat on. There we go. Got him. Well, I'm actually going to stick this back down because I don't want to get it covered in dust and stuff. There you go. So what I do with these, when I put these back together, I put my warranty sticker under here, under this little base here. Rather than putting it over the original sticker and making it look ugly, um, if the sticker's not damaged, that is. But if the sticker's not damaged, I'll put it under here because you have to get to under here to take the motherboard out so just looks cleaner i think in my opinion is it a custom warranty sticker uh they are mate yeah um i use branded stickers with contact details on them as well so yeah um yeah i do use custom warranty stickers yeah so the custom warranty stickers they're more expensive obviously because they're, they're custom printed but it is what it is um, it means no one can replicate them. Right, that's been taken off before. Yeah, never mind. Those black tabs always fall off. It's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Enough waffling on. If you're watching this back of the video, I am live streaming this on Twitch, YouTube, Kick, and uh, Twitter. Um, so, make sure you check me out every Monday and Friday. live streaming around about 5 p.m. US time um, depending what state you're in uh, around about 10 p.m. UK time let's test the power supply shall we so I want to see if the power supply puts out 12 volts before I do anything because that will rule out whether we've got a PSU issue well it won't completely rule it out but you know we can still have a power supply issue and get 12 volts uh, yep, yeah, we're getting 11.75 volt there on that one. And on this one, so we've got two connectors which we need to check. One for the main board and one for the Southbridge board. And yep, yeah, 11.75 volts on that one as well. So we should realistically be getting at least a beep from it with... Uh, the correct voltage coming through the power supply. It's 12 volts, but there's a little bit of voltage drop across the leads and stuff, so it always reads a little bit below 12 volts. We are going to rule out a couple of things. So first thing I want to do is isolate what board has the issue, because basically it can be either this board or it can be this board. So if I swap the Southbridge board with a known working board and it turns on, then I know that I've got a fault following this board. If it still doesn't turn on, then I'll put a known working APU board on and then I can fault find, and then if it powers on, then I can fault find the APU board. It just depends on which board it is. It's going to be very rare that you're going to get an issue where it's both boards that have failed. So it just allows me to isolate the problem. So I'm going to find a known working Southbridge board. I think this Southbridge board's working. If not, I do have another one. But I think this is my known good. I really need to mark my known good, uh, my known good Southbridge board. 
I mean, it could be the front panel board. So obviously I'll try this board. If it powers on, then I'll try the Nexus board. I'll try the Southbridge board from the customer's console with my power button, just as a sanity check. Right, so if this power's on, it'll go beep on, beep off. And nope. So it looks like we've got an APU board issue. Okay. I don't think I've got an APU board to hand which I can use, but it looks like we have got a issue with the APU side, or with the APU board side. So let's just check the 12 volt rail for short. Yeah, dead short to ground on the 12 volt rail on the APU board. Okay, could have probably saved some time and done that first, but never mind. Let's just have a look at this one. Nope, that safe bridge board appears to be okay, so it's absolutely fine. So we've got a dead short to ground on the 12 volt rail on the APU board. Cool, good stuff. So now we've got somewhere to go by, or something to go by, should I say. That's been off before. So it should be nice and easy to take off. The problem we have to be careful with on these is potentially damaging the board while you're removing them. Ding! There you go. Got him. Let's just double check that now that he's been unplugged for a little while just to make sure. Yep, dead short to ground on 12 volt. Good stuff. Let's have a little hunt around and see if we can see anything out of the ordinary before I go injecting voltage or whatever. So this viscous paste is covering the MOSFETs. So it looks like I might have to, oh, well, we've got a crack there. Uh, it looks superficial to be honest on that resistor. I'm gonna have to change it though. I can't leave it like it just in case. Uh, not really interested in anything that's directly underneath the APU at the mini. Okay, not seeing anything. Honestly, it's probably going to be one of these MOSFETs. Uh, hmm, what's that? U4, there's something around there. Is that some sort of heat spot or... Or what? I don't know. It is a twelve. It is part of the twelve volt circuit, though. Not seeing anything else. Okay. Let's just have a look around here then to start with. So there's there's something around these two MOSFET. Let's go into diode mode. So diode mode will give me a nice fast reading, an accurate reading as well. And yep, that's reading as short. Uh, they're, they're all going to read as short actually because, well, it's all on the same rail. Let's just have a look around here quickly. Uh, I'm going to remove this viscous paste from these MOSFETs. There's two, there's two lots of MOSFETs on these consoles. So is this side short into ground? Yep. Yeah, it's all short into ground. It is going to be fairly difficult to find that short because all of the 12 volt rail, rail well, every 12 volt rail is showing a short. So it's going to be what it's likely going to be one of these main MOSFETs. Um, I think the fastest route for this is going to be to inject voltage, to be honest. I am going to take a wild stab in the dark and say it might be something to do with around U4, so around these two MOSFETs here. There's something there, I'm not sure whether, whether it's factory flux or flux from a previous repair or what, but um, yeah, there's definitely something on the board there. So, I think what I'm gonna do is drink my coffee. Ha, tricked you all. Remove the first and last MOSFET on both sides. Uh, I could do, that is, a, that is an option. Nah, I'll just inject voltage. It's, it's quicker to just inject voltage on these. That's not a bad option though, break the circuit up. Right, okay, so let's ground the board. So I'm gonna to go to one volt. 
Obviously, it's a 12 volt rail, but we don't want to be injecting 12 volts into it because that's going to inject 12 volts into any other circuit which might be short with the 12 volt rail. So, we want to go for 1 volt to start with. So, let's get my thermal camera. Uh, the 12 volt phase is on the back side of the border here. So, I'm going to be focusing around there first. And we get 5 amps of current. I always leave the current uncapped because I want it to get hot. I don't want to cap the current because that'll cap the amount of heat that's going through the board. So, let's just scan around the board a little bit. Uh, seeing a little bit of a... No, that's a reflection, never mind. Um, let me just... Uh... Yeah, there's absolutely no sign of heat at all on that board. Is that just a reflection? Yeah. So no sign of heat at all on that side of the board. Not seeing any heat. Other than a little bit where I'm actually injecting. The board's ice cold. <laughs> Literally ice cold. Hmm. Hmm. Not good. Alright. Okie dokie. I'm not injecting more than one volt. I'm not doing that. It's uh, it's, it's a little bit too risky. I think I am going to follow the advice and remove the, f the uh, first and last MOSFET from each phase. I could actually leave my multimeter connected up in diode mode and see if it releases the short as I'm doing it. Right, so I can keep an eye on it then. Um, if my multimeter is connected up, I can keep an eye on it as I'm removing components. Right, that's still short. Uh, is this short this side now? Yes. So those phases are still short. How about these phases? Are they still short? Yep. Yep, indeed. Eh? Right, okay. I can't keep an eye on it from this side because I've got no way of connecting the probes up. Go for it. Yeah, I might do. I'll see if I get time. Oops. Well, ha. <laughs> That weren't meant to happen. Uh, we're still short. Oh yeah, these boards can soak up a lot of heat. A hell of a lot of heat. Are we still short? Yeah. We are indeed. Ah, oh, this sucks. Gary, how's it going, mate? I'm just hoping it's not the APU that's... Uh, the 12 volt that goes to the APU that is um, short. Because there is a 12 volt rail on the APU. Uh, let me just get a schematic quickly. So I'm just running through the schematic just to try and find 12 volt. What page does that go to? Does it really go directly to SOC? No, it can't. Surely not. It's definitely a MOSFET issue. I think it is, yeah. Hmm, I guess it is marked as uh, 12 PO SOC. Um, right, okay. Page 55 then. Removed for retail fab. You punk. Uh, I think it's going to be a case of... Because um, it's not even on the schematic, so I think it's going to be a case of just... 
not guesswork, but like educated guess, just start removing stuff from the 12 volt rail. So I guess we just remove these one by one and test it afterwards. Oh, that sucks. That's really annoying. I'm just really hoping it's not that the 12 volt that goes directly to the APU. I'll sort that cap out later, I'm not bothered about that. Still short. Still short. Oh, this is going to suck, man. Still short. You know what? It's easy without the microscope. It's going to be the last one you remove. Yep. You know why it's always the last one? Does anyone know why it's always the last one? Because you're not going to remove another one once you found it. Ha! Ow, those tweezers are hot. Damn. Still short. Still short. You watch it not be the MOSFETs at all. Um, I think I can inject more volts with the FETs removed, yeah. I think that would be an option. But... I mean, I'm reluctant anyway, no matter what, to inject more volts. There we go. There we go. Short gone. Slowly climbing back up, 0.15 volts, and rising. Damn it, which one was that? Can anyone tell me which one of these it was? Was it that one? Which one was it that I've just removed? I think it's that one. No. That one. I think. I think it's that one. It's either that one or that one. I'll put that one back on first. And then I'll put that one back on. And we'll take it from there. Um, so if I put that one and that one back on and the short doesn't come back, then that one's bad. Because I wasn't expecting it. And trust it to bounce right at the last second. Oh dear. Never mind. I'm going to have to get a couple of caps for this as well, which I'll sort out in a little while. Could be more than one, couldn't it? It could be, yeah, which is why I'm going to check them after every one. I think I'll probably check them after every single one, just to be on the safe side, because more than one can blow. It's not very likely, but it can happen. Um, I think I've had it happen a couple of times.
go. No more short there. Good stuff. And that should now be a working Xbox Series X. We'll see. Look at that. You cannot even tell that anyone's been in there. Can't tell that anyone's been there. That's the way it should be when you do a repair. It should be left as you found it. Twandle has raided my stream with 18 viewers. Hey! Twan Raid. Thank you. Uh, Twan Dollars. Thank you for raiding. Welcome to all of Twan Dollars' uh, viewers. Big fan, big fan of your YouTube videos. I really appreciate that. Thank you, mate. Thank you, buddy. What do I do? Do I go balls to the wall and just um, put it all back together? Before I test it? No, let's not do that. Let's not... Let's not wait, risk wasting time just in case. I like to try and get three repairs done on every stream, if I can. I don't know why, I just, I just like to do three. I think it's a good number. Um, or at least attempt three repairs, so... Um, whoops. Yeah, I like to at least attempt three repairs. So, let's try not to waste time. So, I'll partially put it together, as in, like, you know, secure uh, secure the boards in and stuff like that. But, other than that, I can just test it as it is. Here we go. In the words of Jesse J, you ready? Right, let me end... The poll, 89% of people on YouTube think that it's going to work. And 99% say yes on Twitch. Let's have a look. Ha 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 it don't work. Uh oh. Oh, it don't work. Seems it might have taken out another MOSFET. I think that 12 volt short's come back. Unless we've got an issue on the safe bridge as well. On the safe bridge board as well, sorry. Then it looks like that 12 volt short's come back. Yeah, the short's come back. It's taking another MOSFET out. Oh, this sucks. Um, let me just set my bench supply back up quickly. We're only getting 88 milliamps of current draw at one volt. <laughs> oh wow, that's going to be impossible to find as well now. Actually, no, it's not because the voltage isn't dropping. Um, so voltage isn't dropping down to ground. Uh, voltage isn't being limited now. Yeah, we should be okay for finding this using voltage injection now and figure out what's gone wrong. So has a cap gone bad? Has another MOSFET gone bad? I'm going to look around these MOSFETs here to start with. Right, so you can see the MOSFETs there. That's where the MOSFETs are. So, let's give it some ground. Hundred and fifty milliamps of current, and there is a heat spot. It's the one in the middle. So it looks like multiple MOSFETs are going to go bad on on this. It could end up. Could end up at a point where it's, it's actually damaged every single one of them and, um, you know, we could end up having these die one by one. And that short is gone, I think. Let me just double check with the multimeter. I checked it with voltage injection and it appears to be gone. Let's just double check it with the multimeter. So, continuity. Yeah, there you go. Short's gone. Uh, right, okay. Well, let's replace yet another MOSFET. At least I haven't got to take them all back off again just to find out which one it is. At least it's actually showing up which ones are going bad now. But we definitely had a, um, a clear 12 volt rail as well. That's a weird thing. So I think maybe another one of them was on the way out. And it took for it to actually apply power to actually work. We could end up having to do this a few times. We don't know. 
unfortunately. It is pretty rare for two FETs to fail. Well, I mean, technically they didn't fail, did they? Not, not together. They just failed one after the other. But it is pretty rare for that to happen. Unless we've got a MOSFET driver issue, then... Yeah. Right. Do we have a short anymore? We shouldn't have. Nope. No short. Right. Let's clean her up. And put it back together. End poll. 40% of people on YouTube think no. Forty percent of people on YouTube were correct. That's just killed another MOSFET. Forty percent of people on YouTube were correct. Hmm, it's going to kill them all, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to kill every MOSFET. Okay, what's failed this time? We've got another twelve volt short. Yeah, but only four ohms this time. Interesting. Have I already changed that MOSFET? I don't think I have. Right, this is number four from the left. Which one did I change before? <coughs> CPU or APU, you reckon? I don't know, I'm not I'm not convinced on that. I'll double check this in a sec. No, I haven't changed that one. I don't think. Well, I haven't got a short now. If we take a look at the, um, the schematic, you've got V reg CPU core, uh, V underscore CPU core output. Uh, so you've got V underscore 12 PO underscore GFX CPU coming in, which is 12 volts in from the GPU. And that goes directly into the MOSFET on these four pins here, V in. So pin one, pin one, 20, 21, and 29. It goes directly into there. Um, v driver is V underscore 3.3 standby underscore SOC. The 3.3 volt standby SOC, again, is another one of those MOSFETs, the MPA6965. And again, that takes 12 volts in. So, I'm going to say that very likely that it would be the APU if it takes another MOSFET. So I'll try one more FET. One more time. So can't, I can't confirm what 99% APU. Um, I'm going to say, in my opinion, I, I never like to say it's the APU because there's no real way to prove it um, unless you've got like a crack in the APU or something like that. But yeah, I'm not going to risk any more than three MOSFETs on this. It's just not worth it. Not when you think that these cost. This is costing me every time one of these MOSFETs blow. It's costing me seven pound every single time. Plus, obviously, other costs as well, like uh, electricity, solder, flux, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, so it looks like it's driven by the by the uh, the actual APU, which I didn't know. I didn't know that at all. Right, I'm gonna grab. Another MOSFET. 
use a few from a donor board. Um, I do, I do use donor board MOSFETs, but I also sell those MOSFETs on my online store, consolefix.shop. So every, every one that I kill is one less that I can sell to a customer. And I'll sell them on the online store for a little under £7 each. I made about 10 US dollars per MOSFET. So I'm, I'm losing, I'm basically losing unrealised po uh, profits or unrealised income by killing these MOSFETs because I can't resell them once they're dead. I just want as much confirmation as I can get before I do declare this as non-fixable. Let's just get rid of this little blob and then I'll reflow it fully into place. Ow, that board is freaking hot. I just touched the donor board with the bottom of my wrist. And that hurt. The most sensitive part of your arm. It's almost coffee o'clock. What I find interesting is the fact that it's blown... Um, blown one MOSFET and then once, it's, once that's been replaced... It's blown another MOSFET twice. A different MOSFET. That's what I do find odd. And more to the point is, how on earth would this even happen? But how would it kill the APU? It would have to be some pretty serious power surge. Well, I've seen these take some real stick, like real bad stick. Yeah, it's killed another one instantly, isn't it? <laughs> Immediately killed another MOSFET. Yeah, it's dead, Jim. Sorry, I'm I'm calling that one. Calling that one no fix. Um, I think it's the APU because those MOSFETs do go straight, do get fed straight from the APU. It's pretty much donor parts at this point. It sucks, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, I know you did. Um, Dave, um, and I do appreciate the input, mate. I did see your message. I, I think I, I think I've acknowledged it. I think I did. Uh, if I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, but I do like to make absolute uh, absolute sure myself. Um, you know, I've got I've got to make sure I can't just go based on um, past experiences. I like to I like to be absolutely certain before I call it. You, you all know what I'm like. I'm. Uh, I'm a little bit meticulous in terms of how long I spend on devices. I really shouldn't be, but I do. Um, I like to cover all bases.